Hey, how are ya? I'm Todd from Goldman Sachs and I work on the trading floor. I'm what those little retail traders call a big boy. I'm kind of a big deal. I'm a big boy and a big deal. I move big money. I'm a big boy. I'm a big- Logic. No, not that one. Logic. Todd and the other big boys don't care about your little positions. Price moves to liquidity and then that liquidity becomes no more entity. The pool is dry now. Hey, I'm Price. I'm moving to this liquidity. Oh, oh, where will I go next? To the liquidity! When there's a clear support or resistance spot, or even just the lower high of day where people are expecting a reversal, their thesis becomes invalidated when price moves beyond these spots. Obviously, they would put their stop loss just beyond that spot. Todd and the other big boys go, Look at all these ding-dongs who watch the stupid mi Oh, sorry. The secret mindset. And then they throw in a big order to push it into that pool of liquidity to form their positions. Us little guys get our orders taken out as we watch price move on without us, and the big boys get bigger. Or so you'd like to believe, wouldn't you? Yeah, that'd make the market really simple, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Ominous sound effect. Price never moves like this. I didn't find any published research from Google Scholar, but I did learn that banning trophy hunting will exacerbate biodiversity loss, which seems backwards, but whatever. I'm not actually going to read it. This bit has served its purpose. I did find some research on Forex where they developed an algorithm to try and detect these instances. Looking at that picture, you can see how stop loss hunting might be happening at the most obvious places to put a stop. This is clearly a demand zone in some people's minds, and it's also a recent low. Traders would have put their stops underneath it, because that's what all of the YouTube experts and book writers say to do. The algorithm they made for getting into these reversals resulted in a 124% return from 2016 to 2018. Other than this, I couldn't find anything from a source that didn't have an agenda. Especially that store that sells agendas. <laughs> no, don't put that in. It's really the worst joke you've ever made. The neutral sites like Investopedia didn't have anything of value beyond a definition. We already know what stop hunting is. Its definition is its name. I'm gonna go duck hunting. What's duck hunting? Okay, stop it. I'm gonna go duck hunting. What's duck hunting? It's duck hunting. Oh. I even went to the deep dark depths of the second page on Google. I'm sure you've seen or heard of the people on various forums who genuinely believe the market does the opposite of whatever they think will happen. These people unironically think there's some big- These people unironically think there's some big evil guy like Todd just waiting for them to enter a trade so they can make it go the other way. And you know what? Maybe they're right. I would bet they weren't, though. I don't know if it's because people forget that they're only the main character in one of 8 billion people's lives or something else, but the idea that Todd is waiting for you to enter a trade just to move it the other way is ridiculous. Really funny. Look at him. Does he look like a guy that would do that? Nah. Let's bring a little reasoning into this as we watch the earth. We like to toss phrases around like pushing the market up or down to grab stop losses. Whoa, listen to that beautiful music. That would take quite a few orders to soak up the entire liquidity from the current price down or up to the stop loss pool. Not only that, but the market tends to be in a pretty good balance most of the time. It's not like there's only going to be only buy orders or only sell orders. On top of that, if this was really happening the way we believe it does, then the obvious next step to do would be to throw in a bunch of limit orders down at a stop loss grab level. If stop loss hunting is making you fail, just follow the big boys if it's so obvious. Hmm. Say it with me. Hmm. Fine, don't. Let's make it even more complicated. With limit orders, it's first come first serve, which presents its own set of problems. I suppose the counter to that would be that the big boys are just creating fake structure in order to be the ones who have orders in first as price approaches artificial structures designed to pull stop losses in one spot. Then, beyond that, the next argument is that we're living in a simulation and everything has been designed to make us fall into a trap. And then what's the point in even doing anything? Hey, quit being nihilistic. It's your responsibility to find meaning. What are you even talking about? Said me to my Google Doc as I brainstormed ways to transition from that beautiful stock video. Okay, time for charts. Chart time. It's chart time, everybody. Stop hunting is probably real but only in very specific conditions. In a chart like this, nah, there's nothing weird going on here. Same with this one, except for that weird support line. But you know what? As these words flow from my brain into my fingers, I realized that the whole stop loss thing gets really dunked on. Have you ever seen such a beautiful hypothetical demand zone? Trading guide channels would pay good money for this stuff. So 
Since everybody loves their supply and demand and support and resistance, yes, they're different. Top right video explains that. Good plug. Why would there not be a massive sell order stop loss pool right underneath this? A big boy like Todd would only have to soak up the liquidity of a few ticks to get it to go below 4265, the support level, and grab a bunch of stop losses to initiate a large position. So why didn't that happen here? This is such a perfect opportunity. Everything is speculative about this topic unless Todd emails me and tells me what's actually going on. But still, I do logic. My logic is usually good at breaking apart the nonsense of common trading concepts. I'm also about 73% idiot though, so let me know if you catch that part of me slipping into this video. Also, if you're thinking I scoured the charts to find this picture, nope. I randomly selected this after 10 seconds of scrolling, grabbed a screenshot, and then was like, whoa, some weird stuff going on here. Here's a good one. I like this because maybe Todd was up to some shenanigans here. What's a common thing that most retail traders are going to use as a stop loss? A pivot point? Swing low? Recent low? You know. So maybe Todd thought that the amount of stop losses under that recent swing low by the blue line was high enough for him to push it down a bit and soak up. Again, maybe. If I was trying to tell you that stop loss hunting is a big thing, I would certainly use this chart to show that. Maybe you noticed this too, which is a tiny push below the recent low. Maybe it's completely unrelated. I'm not bringing volume into this because it's not like that's going to reveal any secrets. Increasing, decreasing, or consistent volume bars can mean one thing as much as they mean another thing. No point in adding more variables to something that nobody actually knows. If only we could get all the vaccine and war experts into trading so they could tell us everything that's going on. After all, they know everything after just a few articles. Anyways, next chart. This one took a while to find because I was looking for a supplier demand zone that got poked through just a little before reversing. Here's a little bit of a pokey candle. I'm sure you see this while trading. It'll go through just a little and then reverse. Maybe there's a bit of Todd action going on here, maybe not. We could look at more examples, but that's boring, so let's do some more logic. Don't be a fish. Wait, no, that's the wrong analogy. Don't be a sheep. Stop using common trading knowledge to decide the location of your stop losses. If it seems obvious, Todd and the boys might be waiting like vultures to get a slice of that sweet liquidity. If you see the world's most obvious supply zone on the hourly chart, guess what? Floor traders also see that, and they actually make money. <laughs> Sorry. It's not that they care about you as an individual trader, but if you're behaving the same way that 2,000 other traders are, suddenly, collectively, you have become important. Logically, it would just be a good trade to push price up a tiny little bit to grab a bunch of orders without getting a ton of slippage, because there's actually enough liquidity up there to sustain the size of an order. God, this video is beautiful. Can I go there? So you might see what looks like stop hunting at the low or high of day, in supply and demand zones, and in swing lows and highs, because enough of us little baby retail traders are acting the same. They're probably waiting for the secret mindset to reveal the next groundbreaking strategy just so they can start figuring out the next place some stop losses are going to be put. Yeah, eat those dandelions. Comment nice down below and I will enter your name into a random number generator and give one of you a shout out in the next video. Not because I need the engagement to have this video get pushed out to more people, but because I just love random number generators. Okay, thanks. Become a patron and get your video topic requests fulfilled like Nathaniel did here. Thank you very much, patrons, and also everyone else. Happy trading.